Good morning. Hey, God let the Hebrews be taken into captivity. Does he still care? Our reading today is at Jeremiah 29, verses 1 to 4. Now these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the remainder of the elders who were carried away captive, to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. This happened after Jeconiah the king, the queen mother, the eunuchs, the princes of Judah and Jerusalem, the craftsmen, and the smiths had departed from Jerusalem. The letter was sent by the hand of Elasah the son of Shaphan and Gemariah the son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah king of Judah sent to Babylon to Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all who were carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. So the people were disobedient, they rebelled, they didn't do what God said, they didn't reform, they didn't repent, there was not, so finally God sends the army, he he works it out so that they come in and they're overthrowing, they're overturning everything, and now the leaders, from the king and the queen mother and on down, the, 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 the artisans, they are all being carried, all the useful people for the needs of Babylon, they're being taken to Babylon and that's where they're going to spend probably the rest of their lives, most of them. They probably are feeling a little bit down here, you know, abandoned, abandoned by God, uh, total failure, the, the nation is destroyed. What do they have to show for it? What do they have to show for all their schemes and all their plotting? And, you know, the days when they were rich and, in, and doing pretty well and thought they were just great stuff. What about that? Well, now there they are, carried away to Babylon, and they might feel totally abandoned, but you know what? What happens? God sends a message, a beautiful message, and we're going to be reading that the next few mornings. But one thing that's important to notice here is that God is letting them know that he's the one that sent them into captivity. They might want to think, you know, well, it was just happenstance. It just was a bad working out of the, of the pieces. But no, God's telling them here that, verse 4, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all who were carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. He wants them to know that they are under his chastening. He hasn't abandoned them. He's not sent them to Babylon to just be destroyed. He still is looking for hearts. He's looking for people that are willing to repent. He's looking for people who will come back and be part of his kingdom. And so look what he's doing here. He's giving them a word Yes, I'm responsible, and really, you're responsible. You didn't repent. You didn't turn back. But I have a word for you, and he's going to give them a word a word of peace for most of them here as we look at this the next few days. Important for them to realize, though, this wasn't just geopolitics. God, the hand of God was in this, and God caused them to be carried away to Babylon. They are under his chastening for their wrong things, and yet he hasn't abandoned them. What an interesting a uh, total picture this is for us as we are looking now at Jeremiah 29. We're following chronologically the book of Jeremiah, and it's taken us now to follow that out over here into Jeremiah 29. And so these people might feel pretty depressed, but God has a word for them, a good word. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you that even though we do harm to you and bad to you, you do not abandon us. Bless us and keep us just as you even still had in your heart and in your mind, Lord, even these rebels who upended your kingdom and you sent them to Babylon, Lord, you were merciful to them. Be right and be just with them. Uh, deal with them as they need to be dealt with and deal with us, Lord, in a way that we need to be dealt with. Help us to be better, Lord, to be more attentive to when you're chastening us. Help us to accept that and say yes. This is the chastening of God. This is a good thing, even though it hurts, even though it seems hard. Bless us today and help us to be faithful in these strange hours in your church in this day. Thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So, yes, God loves us. He hasn't discarded us. He still does good to us, even when we've harmed his kingdom. He still wants our heart. He's still looking to bring us along and make us part of his family. So don't feel so cast out and lost. And now go through this day knowing that the God of heaven is pursuing, pursuing. He's pursued you and I. He wants us there in the kingdom. It's his good pleasure to give us the kingdom. God be with you this day.